is Trivia for Kids, where it's not just for adults anymore. Hi, Trivia for Kids listeners. Casey here. So before Dan and Ren get this next episode started, I need to offer up a little apology for something that happened during last week's episode. Remember when we talked about Campbell and his tornado category? Well, I made a big mistake, and it should have been her tornado category. Campbell girl, I am so sorry I made that mistake. I should know better. I have a first name that can go for boys or girls, too. So please accept my apology. Thank you so much for being such a great listener, and please keep sending your awesome category ideas. And now. Here's episode 17. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 17. Tonight, we have Dan, myself, and... Ren. And we are super excited. We have some great categories. I have not gotten to help out with the recording in a few times, so I am pretty excited. We're going to have a, a, a blast. we got some great jokes. we got some good stuff to talk about. Ren, you want to start us off with a great joke? Why did the hamburger go to the gym? I don't know. Why? To get new buns. Woo! (laughs) That was a pretty good one. I like it. Good to combine exercise humor and food humor. (laughs) So we are, uh, we're pretty excited to be inside right now because we have had some crazy weather out here lately. What's it been like, Ren? Windy, cold, and cold. And cold, and windy, and more wind. It has been crazy with wind, and we are excited for spring. We're excited for summer. We're excited to be out of this wind. So without further ado, here we go. Here's how the show works. Trivia for Kids consists of five rounds with seven questions each. We will announce the answers at the end of each round. Each new round will have a different category. After the fifth round, we will have the final exam, which will test you on the toughest questions we have covered in the previous rounds. Everyone ready? Let's get started. Round one, the category is golf. So I wanted to give a big thanks to Oscar for his category idea. Keep beating your mom at golf too, buddy. Question one. What type of golf clubs are used for long shots from the tee or fairway? Question two. In what country did golf originate? Question three. Which of the following is not a golf club? Putter, copper, driver, iron, wood. Question four. What is the term for the number of strokes needed to complete a hole in a golf course? Question five. What is it called when you hit the ball into the hole on your very first shot? Question six. What is Tiger Woods' real first name? Question seven. What is the maximum number of golf clubs allowed in a golf bag? So here are the answers to round one. Question one. What type of golf clubs are used for long shots from the tee or fairway? Woods. Woods are used for long shots from the tee or fairway, and irons are used for the shorter shots or the more precise shots. What's your favorite club to use, Ren? A driver. Ooh, good answer. I like irons better. We like to golf a lot as a family, don't we? We do. Question two. In what country did golf originate? Scotland. Hmm, That's interesting. Even though it's thought that it was possibly originating in other countries like China or Persia, it's actually Scotland where golf first originated. Question three, which of the following is not a golf club? Putter, copper, driver, iron, wood. A copper. 
it's kind of funny when you think about it, but when you say things like wood or iron, you'd think copper would maybe be an answer too, but that is definitely not the case, is it? It is not. Question four. What is the name for the number of strokes needed to complete a hole in a golf course? Par. Right, so each hole on the course is given its own par number. So the longer holes, you have a higher number. So it takes a few more shots to get to the hole. So if a hole has a par five, it should take you five strokes to get the ball from the tee box into the hole. However, it is very difficult to make par, but it's a good goal to aim for. Some of the best golfers out there are called scratch golfers, and they get par pretty much on every hole. They are very, very good. And the professionals, even better. Are you a scratch golfer, Ren? No. No, but you're getting pretty good. You've had a couple times where you've actually had legitimate pars. A few rounds ago, or maybe last one, I told my mom that I smoked her during golf. Well, she told you, and then I said yes. Right? I think you may have beat me on a hole. Question five. What is it called when you hit the ball into the hole on your first shot? A hole in one. And everybody goes crazy for those. That's a pretty pretty uh, neat thing to have happen to somebody. I've never had one personally, but there's some people around here that have had lots of them. So do you just like hit it with your driver and then it goes right into the hole? Yep. Then you go up there and you pick your ball out of the hole and then you all cheer wildly and you give each other hugs and high fives and you run around and you cheer and yuck it up. Someday it'll happen to one of us. <laughs> Someday, maybe. Question six. What is Tiger Woods' real first name? Eldrick. Eldrick Taunt Woods. That is his real name. I think Tiger has a much better ring to it, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Tiger is much more intimidating than Eldrick. <laughs> Question seven. What is the maximum number of golf clubs allowed in a golf bag? 14. That is way more than I expected. I actually wasn't sure on that number. That's very interesting. That's a lot of clubs. Do you suppose everybody uses all those clubs? I thought that it was like seven. Yeah, right? That's a lot of clubs. Round two. The category is Pokemon. Listener Hank had a great category idea. Thanks, Hank. Question one. What's the best most effective Pokeball in the game. Question two, how old is Ash? Question three, what Pokemon type is Pikachu? Question four, what is the name Pokemon short for? Question five, there are several different types of Pokemon throughout the game, but only three types are included in every starter Pokemon set. What are they? Question six, who does Pikachu, the most popular Pokemon, evolve into? Question seven, what is the only known way to make a ditto break from its transformation state and reveal itself? And now the answers to round two. Question one. What's the best, most effective Pokeball in the game? The Master Ball. If you don't know what that is, it's the Red Ball. Oh, I don't think I knew that. This is going to be very interesting to me because I don't know a lot about Pokemon. And I'm, I'm curious to figure some of these things out. Question two. 
How old is Ash? Ten. How much is that in dog years? Twenty. Seventy. Actually, we'll save that for another episode. <laughs> Question three: What Pokemon type is Pikachu? Electric. I kind of thought this question was going to be, what is Pikachu? And what is Pikachu? Is it a rabbit? Or is it like a creature that we don't have a name for? It looks a little like a cat. Oh, interesting. I don't know. Question four. What's the name Pokemon short for? Pocket Monsters. That is a really interesting question because I did not know that. I didn't either. Honestly, I thought it was something like poker money. No offense. I think that they're actually cute, not monsters. It's true. They are pretty cute. Especially Evie. <laughs> question five. There are several different types of Pokemon throughout the game, but only three types are included in every starter Pokemon set. What are they? Fire, grass, and water. Question six. Who does Pikachu, the most popular Pokemon, evolve into? He evolves into Raichu. At first, I thought it was Morpeko, because he looks a lot like Morpeko. Hmm. Interesting. Ren, Ren just got into collecting Pokemon cards this past year, didn't you? Mm-hmm. So I think she knows a lot more about this than I do. So that she's got some great knowledge. <laughs> Question seven. What is the only way to make a ditto break from its transformation state and it reveal itself? You have to make it laugh. I had no clue, and I have no clue how to make it laugh either. I've never played the game. Well, you probably tell it jokes about hamburgers going to a gym. (laughs) And then saying it to get better buttons. (laughs) Round three. The category is hot, hot, hot. Question one. What Australian animal licks its arms to stay cool? Question two. What mode of transportation was created after two men watched a piece of paper float in the updraft of a fire? Question three. Which is the world's largest hot desert? Question four. Energy from what weather occurrence heats air up to 60,000 degrees Fahrenheit? Question five. What is the name of the zone in the Pacific Ocean where three quarters of the Earth's active volcanoes lie? Question six. What is the Guinness World Record for most torches extinguished by fire eating in 30 seconds? Question seven. What red stinging insects who are native to South America were accidentally brought to the the United States on ships in the 1900s? Here are the answers to round three. Question one, what Australian animal licks its arms to stay cool? Kangaroos. So interestingly, they have a network of hundreds of small blood vessels just under the surface of their arms. To stay cool, they lick their arms, and then the moisture from the lick evaporates to cool their warm blood. That's gross, but it's actually a really neat fact. It is. There's actually people that do that too sometimes, I think, where they eat a hot pepper if they live in a really hot place, which seems opposite of what you'd want to do. But then it makes them sweat, and then when the sweat sweat evaporates, it cools their skin. Mm. Slightly cleaner than licking their own skin. Mm. Question two. What mode of transportation was created after two men watched a piece of paper float in the updraft of a fire? Hot air balloon. Would you ever want to go on one of those? Maybe, if it isn't like really windy or something. Yeah, like that would that. not be good. I think it'd be fun to go once. 
Question three, which is the world's largest hot desert? The Sahara Desert in Africa. Right. It's almost as big as the entire United States. That's pretty crazy, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So if you remember from a previous desert category, the largest desert is the cold Antarctic desert. Mm -hmm. But that's obviously not a hot one. <laughs> Question four. Energy from what weather occurrence heats air up to 60,000 degrees Fahrenheit? Lightning. It's six times hotter than the surface of the sun. You want to hear an interesting lightning fact? Sure. I met a person one time that got struck by lightning when he was younger. And you know what the only side effect was? What? His hair grows way faster than anybody else's. That actually sounds good. <laughs> right? I'd like it's that. It's kind of a bizarre thing, isn't it? I'd like I mean, that. thankfully he survived and he was okay, but his hair grows super fast. <laughs> Question five. What is the name of the zone in the Pacific Ocean where three quarters of the Earth's active volcanoes lie? The Ring of Fire. More than 450 volcanoes are located along the Ring of Fire. 90% of Earth's, Earth, Earth's earthquakes, kind of a tongue twister, occur along this path, including the planet's most violent and dramatic seismic events. I would not want to live there. No. Question six. What is the Guinness World Record for most torches extinguished by fire eating in 30 seconds? 54 tor torches. I feel like I'd be dead because I can't even eat a summer sausage without my mouth burning. <laughs> right. Much less fire. <laughs> Do not try this at home, kids. Mm -mm. But that's actually pretty itch. That's almost two torches a second. That's crazy. Question seven. What red stinging insects who are native to South America were accidentally brought to the United States on ships in the 1900s? Fire ants. Curse your ships. <laughs> so when fire ant mounds are disturbed, the fire ants attack, fire ants attack, and it results in multiple stings. And the stings cause, cause kind of a burning sensation because of the high concentration of toxins in their venom. Did you know that fire ants have venom? Yes. Huh. Well, a little. I knew that they hurt when they stung an itch. Right. Hopefully you never have to feel it. <laughs> Round four. The category is things that start with E. Question one. What is the first name of Scrooge in Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol? Question two. What does the E in email stand for? Question three. In the novel and film, in which city does the Wizard of Oz live? Question four. Which gypsy girl takes pity on Quasimodo in The Hunchback of Notre Dame? Question 5. What is the school attended before middle school in North America? Question 6. What do you call a type of animal or species that no longer has any living members? Question 7. What is another word for same? S-A-M-E. And now the answers to round four. Question one. What is the first name of Scrooge in Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol? Ebenezer. That is a very weird name. It is. What do you think they call it for short? Neasy? Eb. Ebby? Ebenezer. They probably just stick with Ebenezer. 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 
question two. What does the E in email stand for? Electronic. Electronic email, no. Electronic mail. Mm -hmm. You want to hear an interesting fact that tells you how old I am? I didn't get my first email address until I was in high school. And how long ago was that? A long time. Question three. In the novel and film, in which city does Wizard of Oz live? The Emerald City. I don't really want to watch that because my mom said she was terrified of it, of the witch. Just of a couple parts. I think she liked the movie for the most part, but there's a couple yeah. parts that kind of scared her a little bit when she was younger. Question four. Which gypsy girl takes pity on Quasimodo in The Hunchback of Notre Dame? Esmeralda. What does pity mean? Um, it's like when you feel sad for someone and you care for them because of it. Question five. What is the school attended before middle school in North America? Elementary. So what are you in right now? Elementary. Question six. What do you call a type of animal or species that no longer has any living members? Extinct. So some examples of extinct animals are the dodo bird, the Tasmanian wolf, not to be confused with the Tasmanian devil, which is actually a real thing, what is and the Tasmanian golden toad. Devil? I don't know. We, we might have to include oh, that sometime. Oh, I know sometime. what it is. I know what it is. You can see it on out, Back to the Outback. Mm. It's like a purple animal, and they're actually really ugly. They're purple. Mm-hmm. Well, it was on the movie. Oh. No. So maybe not purple in real <laughs> maybe life. Maybe not purple. <laughs> and also the golden toad. So animals and species that have very few remaining members are actually known as endangered. Another E word, which is kind of cool. It goes from endangered to extinct. Unless you're the animal that's becoming extinct, then it's not cool. <laughs> Question seven. What is another word for same? So we came up with the answer equal for this one. But, Ren, what answer did you give? Exact. Yeah. So that kind of works too. Sometimes exact or exactly the same works. So we'll take exact or equal. Round five. The category is the Bible. Question one. What is the first book of the Bible? Question two. Who were the first man and woman on the earth? Question three. Who received the Ten Commandments from God? Question four. How old was Abraham when his son Isaac was born? Question five. What symbol did God give to Noah as a promise that he would never flood the earth again? Question six. What did David use to defeat the giant Goliath? Question seven. Which prophet was swallowed by an enormous fish? So here are the answers to round five. Question one, what is the first book of the Bible? Genesis. Question two, who were the first man and woman on earth? Adam and Eve. Question three, who received the Ten Commandments from God? Moses. And you know what the Ten Commandments were written on? Uh, no. Two stone tablets. Oh, right. Question four. How old was Abraham when his son Isaac was born? A hundred years old. Right? Can you imagine somebody that's a hundred years old today having a baby? That's, that's a pretty wild one to think about, too. Mm-hmm. Question five. What symbol did God give to Noah as a promise that he would never flood the earth again? Rainbow. 
Question six. What did David use to defeat the giant Goliath? A slingshot and five rocks. Or four. I don't know. I forgot. No, I think four. Question seven. Which prophet was swallowed by an enormous fish? Jonah. Yep, and he was in there for three days. And three nights. Yeah, correct. He was there during the day and during the night. You suppose you could tell night and day when you're inside the belly of a fish? It's probably just dark all the time. <laughs> Imagine trying to read a book. <laughs> probably not happening. And now the questions for the final exam. Now remember, you've already heard these questions in this episode, but these are the hardest ones we had. So use your memory and try to think back to what the answers were. Question one. What is the term for the number of strokes needed to complete a hole in a golf course? Par. Question two. What is the name of the zone in the Pacific Ocean where three quarters of the Earth's active volcanoes lie? The Ring of Fire. Question three. What do you call a type of animal or species that no longer has any living members? Extinct. Question four. How old was Abraham when his son Isaac was born? A hundred years old. Question five. In what country did golf originate? Scotland. Question six. Energy from what weather occurrence heats air up to 60,000 degrees Fahrenheit? Lightning. Question seven. What symbol did God give to Noah as a promise that he would never flood the earth again? A rainbow. Well, thank you all for listening. I had a great time joining in on the podcast today. Did you have a great time, Ren? Yes. So stay tuned for episode 18 next week. We always appreciate the emails coming in when people suggest categories. It really it really helps, and it, it helps us learn things, too. So hope you all have a great week. Have fun. Please follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Trivia for Kids Podcast. And if you have any ideas for questions or even an entire category, please email us at Trivia for Kids Podcast at gmail.com.